Good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio reporting for International Aquafeed magazine. Uh, it's that time of the month again when we've got a new edition back from the printers and in the mail. But first let me tell you about last month's edition which you see here. I showed you this last without the wrapper. This is a biodegradable wrapper that you can dispose of in your compost heap or alternatively throw it into the environment. It disappears over time. But however, that's what we've been doing. That's our commitment to the environment. From our point of view, we use uh, environmentally sound inks, paper, etc. So we're making our magazine as environmentally friendly as we can. Uh, but it's this July issue that we're talking about. It's back from the printer. It's a dramatic issue and it's in the mail to you now. Vaughan, I'm, uh, I'm introducing our managing editor, Vaughan, to take us through some of the highlights of this issue. Welcome, Vaughan. Hi, Roger. Good to be with you. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Vaughan. Uh, a stimulating edition. And I'd just like to bring that up on the screen now just to show you or everybody what this magazine looks like. I mean, that's a dramatic cover. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually a, a picture of cr Antarctic krill. Now, I had no idea before what they actually looked like. These are just small crustaceans. So obviously, I don't know if they call it a school of krill or a swarm of krill, but there's, a, there's zillions of krill in this image. And there's more inside, and it's pretty a phenomenal looking uh, thing with this bright crimson color. It's quite astonishing. It must be a swarm of krill. I can't believe that the association with uh, us on the on the the surface of the planet recognize this as bees or wasps or a swarm yeah. of something. So uh, I guess this is on the ocean floor down in the Antarctic or somewhere where krill uh, inhabit. But uh, what's in the magazine on krill uh, specifically, Vaughan? Um, yeah, there is a really great article on krill. Um, the theme of this issue is kind of uh, alternative proteins, which is obviously an ongoing thing with, with aquafeed. Um, everyone's trying to come up with a new sustainable source of protein. And uh, in this case, it's krill. Um, and krill has a number of advantages as a, an aquafeed. It's got all the essential amino acids and uh, omega-3s, etc. But the great thing about it is uh, it is sustainable and recognized as such. So that's a great thing to have for the aquaculture industry. Yeah. But, but you said, uh, you know, this issue is has a lot more on protein. I noticed something about European Union in the news section uh, on its soy uh, uh, commitment uh, when it comes to protein uh, uh, sustainable soy production. So what other soys are we covering in the, or what other proteins are we covering in this issue? So uh, other proteins are, well of course everyone's heard of um, the, the black fly larvae which is being used in a number of feeds now. Um, our, uh, our technical editor, P Professor uh, Simon Davies, even mentions in his column two sources of protein that I've never heard of. And one is a kind of fungus that grows on wood waste from the forestry industry. That sounds interesting. Hopefully we'll have an article on that in the near future. And the other one was a source of um, protein from fungus. So another one I've never, ever heard of. And that one's coming from Washington State, which I used to live in. So hopefully we'll have an article on that in the near yeah. future. And do you think these are particularly useful for the aqua industry, in your view? Well, yeah, because uh, anything you can produce sustainably, and if you think about wood waste, there's mountains of that produced by the forestry industry. Mm. So that looks like a, a real winner to me. Mm. Mm. And what other subjects are we covering? What other features do we have in the magazine this month, Juan? Okay, so um, our new columnist, Peter Johansson, yes. he's got an interesting article on uh, the new EU food protocols on food safety. And there's a new one from FAO as well. And of course, food safety, biosecurity, these are other hot button issues in the industry. And that's a very interesting column from Peter. Um, in addition to the krill article, we have um, the use of zinc. A company called Zinpro has got an article on the benefits of adjusting zinc levels in the source of shrimp feed. It seems like zinc is, is an important mineral for just about everybody. It seems to be important for human beings, 
I know it's very vital in certain animal feeds, terrestrial animal feeds, and uh, this article focuses on its use in shrimp uh, feeds. That's very specialized. Yeah, yeah, it uh, is. Uh, the FAO is, uh, you know, they've published a report recently on the, um, the state of the world fisheries and aquaculture. I mean, it's using 2018 data. But uh, the FAO is saying uh, to ensure food security future for all fisheries, which we know about, capture fisheries, and aquaculture sectors will play a key role in this. And I think that's being reflected in almost everything we do, how important aquaculture is uh, becoming in, in the supply of protein for human consumption. Exactly. Mm. And in, in the uh, shrimp uh, category, we have another article on shrimp, and this is involving screening for nitrofurans and fenacols, which I'd never heard of. Um, but these are used in aquaculture to slow bacteria growth. Okay. And unfortunately, this, these are both banned from use in the USA, China, and in the EU. That's another, and this article is about detecting levels of those in the shrimp feed. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thing. Yeah, and and is are there any other features on the nutritional side that you'd like to mention? Uh, yeah, we have some more. Again, the theme seems to be alternative proteins because protein proteins in aqua feed are the number one cost. In, we're trying to get the, exploit these alternative proteins to get the cost down and to create a sustainable source of, of proteins for so we can continue producing aquafeed into the future. Yeah. And of course, in this issue, we have our fish farming technology section. Uh, how's, how's that shaping up? There's a very interesting article in, in the fish farming technology about split pond recirculation mm. in India. And this is this is a system where they have two ponds and the water is, is flowing from is flowing from one pond to the other pond. And that's supposed to have a lot of benefits for the fish. In this case, they are growing snakehead fish, which actually are an air breathing fish. I didn't I've never heard of those before. Mm. So that's uh, that's in India. I, I do like getting articles from uh, other other nations and other countries from developing the developing countries. I think it's good that they're represented in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have? We have um, we have a, an interview with uh, our interview section is with Brian Beckley, who's the president of Biomark, mm -hmm. which is a division of Merck. And that, those are always interesting to read about. Um, what else do we have in our well, I, I, I'd be interested to know what you spoke about in your, your editorial this month. Well, my editorial was a, an interesting phenomenon that we found here at, uh, at Perindale Publishers is that just three months ago, a significant portion of, all, of both of our magazines was taken up by reporting on COVID-19. Now there's hardly any mentions of COVID-19 in just three months. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... a uh, a tribute to the industry that uh, people are, are adapting to the, to the problems of dealing with COVID-19 and they're overcoming those problems. And I think, as I said, that's to the credit of our, of our industry. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned in there uh, the importance or the growing importance we've seen of webinars and the way people are communicating and exchanging information. Yeah, I, I must be in three or four webinars every week and it's, it's becoming the, uh, the communication method of, of, of of preference. Mm. In fact, we are also at this moment running an extrusion conference. Why don't you tell us some, something about that, Roger? Well, thank you for asking, Vaughan. Uh, we spent the last two days, in fact, we were going to hold the fourth edition of our Aquafeed Extrusion Conference, which has been held twice in the Middle East and once down in Bangkok before, as part of the VIV uh, shows. We were going to hold that uh, in March, uh, physically. But uh, the show was postponed and then postponed again and uh, postponed to the last couple of these last three days actually in Bangkok when it was actually forced into the future into January 2021. So we thought uh, we had the speakers lined up, uh, we had all our ducks in a row, so to speak, and we thought, why not take it online? So in the last two or three weeks, we have been uh, putting together an online platform uh, and it happened on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. 
two half day sessions of four hours each. Uh, you don't want to do more than four hours on a webinar, that's for sure. And even then it was taxing, I think. But having said that, we had uh, 65, 66 people on the first day and 77 people on the second day. Uh, and this was a paid for webinar uh, looking in depth at extrusion processing in the development of, pro of uh, feeds for fish. And what was really fascinating was not just the ingredients, the proteins, etc., being used and the way we should grind and, and sieve and filter and condition before it goes into the, the uh, extruder itself, which was looked at from all different aspects. But what took my imagination was the impact feed has on the environment. Uh, with Jeffo, uh, Dr. Kabir, telling us in depth about uh, the how we are feeding bioflock through the feed that we put into shrimp ponds, for instance, uh, how the environment is responding to feed and how extruded products can minimize, you know, some extruded feed can last in the pond in, in a solid form on the bottom of a shrimp pond for up to two days. So this is being more consumed, whereas normal pelleted feeds uh, uh, dissipate into the uh, water and uh, become soluble uh, much, much quicker than that, maybe a couple of hours even. So uh, fascinating uh, insight into what extrusion can offer and the developments that we've had in extrusion. There are six or seven extrusion specialists on the, on the show, and there's such demand there for this type of information that uh, we're going ahead and re holding this conference again uh, at VIB Asia, which I believe is in March. I've got it written down here somewhere. Uh, maybe I can't fix it. Uh, I think it's 11th and 12th of March next year in Bangkok. So if you are, yes, there we go, 10th to the 12th of March, uh, Victam Asia in Bangkok, and we'll hold it. This time we're thinking about doing a crossover where we hold it actually in person on the site, but we also run it through a webinar conference so, so everybody can engage with it. But um, more importantly, Vaughan, coming up next week is the online milling school. Uh, International Aquafeed is participating in the uh, milling and grain activity of developing an online milling school. Uh, we've got just under 50 people already signed up for the first two hour session. It's going to run over 12 weeks on a Wednesday, two hours every Wednesday on a different aspect of feed production. And that will include aquaculture. So if anybody's out there, type into your uh, uh, search engine, online milling school, online milling school, one word, dot com, and have a look at the program that we're, we're offering. But that's you know, sorry to take over your, your time here, Vaughan, but that's a very important development. I think the magazine, the print magazine, is able to liaise or connect with the online platform to give readers the widest possible choice of the way they receive information uh, that's going to affect their futures. Uh, that's from me, Vaughan. I mean, is there anything else you'd like to add about the magazine? How's the next uh, issue I looking? Just, I just like to say uh, to our readers out there, we're always looking for editorial content. And I think in this time of COVID-19, it's more important than ever to get your message out about your company and what you're doing. Mm. Um, this is free to, be, to have editorial uh, material published in our magazine, even if it's a press release, whatever, we will publish it. And let people know, let your, let your customers know that you're still out there and you're still thriving and you're still uh, leading the way in, in the world of aquaculture. Yes, well, as FAO says, you know, this is a growing sector, and uh, we are here to support everybody in it. Uh, we want to reflect that development in the magazine, so uh, please make your contributions. And as Vaughan referred to earlier, anything from uh, our developing country friends that they would like to see published in the magazine, we're more than happy to, uh, to accommodate them. But uh, thank you very much, Vaughan. A great Thanks. insight into this issue, and uh, good luck with the August, and we'll see you next month. Thank you, Vaughan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.